Hey, it's Monday night, believe it or not, and we're here once again for VoiceOver Body Shop. Tonight, he drove all the way from Las Vegas to join us. Dave Cravassier, who's going to talk about his new life. That's right. We're going to find out. Like a phoenix. He rises from the ashes. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really great to have him here in person. Yeah, and we've got some tech items to talk about. If you got a question, throw it in the chat room. And Please, we want, want questions. Tech, tech questions. And um, and then um, then we can talk about some of the other weird stuff that goes on in our lives. Coming up next on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO BS. Man. They're so loud, I need to turn on the other mic to hear I, them. I know. That was awesome. Outstanding. <laughs> well, it's Monday night once again, and uh, the weather has been beautiful here in Southern California. Yes. For all you guys in the Northeast who are sweltering in humidity and all the hot I stuff. I know. I was riding bikes around Van Nuys and Pacoima on Sunday. A day yeah. uh, You wouldn't normally want to do that in June, but it was actually beautiful. Yeah. Ciclavia no, was that? Oh, it was gorgeous. Happening. Yeah. I was actually up that way at the San Fernando Swamp Meet. Oh, right. That man. was different. I was the only person speaking English there. <laughs> right on. Did you get any deals? Marcy got some like $2 a yard fabric. So hey. she's really happy. You know, something for everybody at yeah. those places. Yeah. Now, somebody gave me something. I have to, I have to thank Joe J. Thomas. <laughs> Well, I'm sitting at the bar. <laughs> that guy's the, a goof. Yeah. If it, you're watching, it, Joe, you're funny. Yeah. Guy. Read Joe's dump. I think that says it all. Uh, he comes into the bar for, we were at a Voices Anonymous meeting. He says, hey, Dan, hold on to this. <laughs> Just hold on to this. <laughs> oh, man. It's a large magnetic <laughs> mustache. The thing that you guys can't really see. Can you go to my close-up camera? Uh, this this one over here. Look at look at what's going on on this mustache. There is, it's it looks like an animal hair <laughs> on that. It's really weird. Yeah. I think that is the final mustache. That, that, like I, I don't. I think literally you never have to receive anything else with a mustache. On no, it no, ever keep again. sending it. I love this stuff. <laughs> Gotta have that. It's the final mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Anyway, so uh, we've got some tech stuff to talk about tonight. And again, if you have a tech question, throw it in the chat room right this very minute, so Jack Daniel, our social media czar, can get it to us, and we can answer it mm -hmm. or solve your problem because we're never wrong <laughs> anyway <laughs> even if i tell you to drop it in the trash take me seriously Ooh, trust me all righty well anyway right now it's time for voice of a body shop presents the vobs voice over extra news all the information you need for a successful voiceover career.
And now the voiceover extra news for June 25th, 2018. Audiobook sales. Last week, the Audio Publishers Association reported with glee the findings from its recent annual survey of publisher members. The APA says was 2017, the APA says, was another year of double-digit growth for the industry in terms of both the dollar volume and number of individual audiobooks sold. Dollar volume jumped 23% to just over $2.5 billion, and unit sales climbed to more than 46,000 titles. Wow. Uh, details are in a report now on VoiceOver Extra. About two dozen readers have clicked the like button at the article. Presumably they are narrators who are happy with their income and or wannabes who envision a bright future voicing audiobooks. But then we get comments. Oh, baby, comments tinged with disappointment. In a social media group, one narrator quipped, I should charge more. And another said, maybe it's time for residuals. At the VoiceOver Extra article itself, a reader writes with sarcasm, Isn't that wonderful? I wonder who's getting most of the revenue for narrating all those audiobooks. He adds, I bet most of it's going to union voiceover talent with major representation. The real opportunities are all locked up by union folks. He says, just like everything else in the VO world. Well, is that the case? Hmm. In 2015, VoiceOver Extra surveyed audiobook narrators and posted a multi-part series on the data, including what they narrated, their level of experience, and what they're paid. Interestingly, most narrators who belonged to the union said they believed that union membership did indeed enhance their chances of obtaining audiobook work. But wait! Those who were not union members believed that not belonging to the union gave them the leg up. By the way, annual income from audiobook narration in 2015 varied from under $10,000 by 64% of the respondents to between fifty dollars and $100,000 for 9.4%. And four respondents sat on a pedestal overlooking us all with over $100,000 per year. The one percenters of the yeah. voiceover narration As it is in everything. If you want to see more from the series, go to voiceoverextra.com and at the articles tab in the gray menu bar, scroll to Biz Audiobooks and then scroll down to the June, 25th, June 2015 reports. From this series and from years of observation, we'd argue that in addition to having skill at narrating, income is greatly affected by moving up from royalty share arrangements with smaller titles to working directly with major publishers and then building volume and popularity. P.S. The audio publisher's report is also packed with lots of info about the habits and preferences of listeners. For instance, what types of books do they prefer to hear? The three most popular genres are, number one, mysteries slash thrillers slash suspense. Number two, science fiction. And thirdly, romance. Look for all the details now at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. And P.S. Coming tomorrow on VoiceOver Extra is help for those who may be burned out in their vo VO career climb or afraid of failure. And it comes from someone whose, names, whose name you recently heard somewhere, Dave Crevassier, who will be joining us in about 15 minutes. That's right. Lots of P.S.'s in that article. I way. know. Yeah. Yes. Lots of things to remember. Audiobooks. Been a while since I've done some. You know, I talk to the people that do them, and a lot of times the people I'm talking to have never done one. And in some cases, they're people that have never done paid or professional voice work at all. Right. So they have the unbelievable mountain to climb, they're, which is... They're down here and... <laughs> The other guys will appear I'll somewhere. You, but you know what? You, you make it through that first project all on your own. It's going to make a lot of the types of voice work seem a little easier. I would think <laughs> so. I would think so. So what's new in tech? Well, I will remind you, as I do every single year, Every I should probably just say start the news every single time and every day and say the same thing, which is don't upgrade or update anything on your computer unless you have a really good reason to. And this things just seem to get worse. And this it's is not a Mac yeah. Windows thing. This is across the board, honestly. 
Um, a client of mine recently, I just went in there to just do, I just did eh, one little routine update. It was just from 0.3 to 0.4. What could possibly go wrong? And find out that the driver for his USB video adapter that goes to the booth just blew up. Happened to me too. And it, yeah, and it was a known <laughs> issue. I went to the company that makes the thing and they said, ah, we're, we're trying to fix it. We didn't, we didn't see it coming. Apple didn't give us a pre, they, they obviously didn't give us a beta <laughs> to test it before they released it. They just pushed and guys just, just yeah. unless there's something that's really misbehaving on your system and it's getting in the way, or you, you've got new hardware that you really want to use and you have to upgrade something, just don't do it. I mean, it's the only thing I would say is worth installing would be security updates. Yes. Um, you do get security updates pushed to your Mac and Windows machines. I'm, I'm more familiar with the Mac side, and I have a Mac that's running like a, I don't know, five-year-old operating system. Mine too. I still get updates there, but they're all security related. So that's what, you know, that's what keeps my system from getting hacked into, apparently, because it never has been. Mm-hmm. Um, a cool product I've had my hands on recently, and I fortunately haven't been able to shoot a video yet, but I will. Um, IK Multimedia, which is a cool company. They make really interesting stuff, not very the, expensive. The, pe- the people who make iRig. They make the iRig yeah. and the iMic Studio and all these little cool gadgets. They even they came up with this little thing, the oh, iRig, no. which is a way to plug an iPad or an iPhone into a mixer. Um, they came up with a <clears throat> speaker. It's not brand new. This has been out a little while, but I just finally got to hear one in the real world, and it's called the iLoud. If you're looking for something that's compact, it really is sort of a Bluetooth speaker. Well, it is a Bluetooth speaker. It's small it's about the size of a large hardcover book Mm -hmm. um but it's it's got a considerable amount of power it's 40 watts like legitimately 40 watts rms of power and it's got two two two-way speakers a woofer and a tweeter and some kind of a waveguide port you know for low frequency but what's interesting about it that makes it different from the millions of bluetooth speakers that are out there is it's really designed for music production so it's designed to be relatively accurate um, all those bows and, and kickers and all the other UA and ultimate ears and all those things, they have a lot of bass boost. They, they do that on purpose to make the music more fun, make it thump. These speakers don't do that. They, they really are very accurate and clean and clear, and they put out a considerable amount of volume. I mean, you don't need a ton of volume for what you're doing, but this is pretty cool. If you're tired of like trying to figure out where I'm going to put my stu- two big studio monitors, this thing just sitting on the desk right underneath your monitor or something like that, it sound it really sounds great. And it's portable. Yeah. It is also a Bluetooth portable speakers with batteries. Yeah. I seriously considered them mm-hmm. when I was looking at, at stu- new studio monitors. Uh, a little spendy yeah, for they, what it is. Well, it was but, like, but it was like two twenty nine for two of them. Yeah. And uh and I thought about it and then someone played the Yamaha's for me. Well, oh, did a, you see the uh, the IKs that are like little little yeah, itty bitty yeah, baby these, ones? These That's are, a new one they came out with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Those are nice too. I haven't heard those yet. Those are cool. I don't know what they're called, but they're very compact. They're like yeah. this big. I was told by the salesperson at at Banjo Emporium that it was a they're they're okay. They're yeah. but they're 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 like enhanced computer speakers. Yeah, I mean, so. if you have a very small space. These little speakers from IK, yeah. either, either the monitors or the iLoud, they're all really interesting solutions. And, you know, my tests, and I played with it at home for a while. I used it, listened to everything, and sounded really, really clean. So nice to, I, I will try to get some kind of a little review at the studio where it's set up uh, for next time. Excellent. Uh, lastly, um, I was just thinking about a question that comes up, and actually I have somebody right now waiting for me to answer this question for them. Um, is should you get Isotope RX elements or the standard version? Because there's a big price disparity. Are right? people having lots of terrible noises and problems with their audio that they need to have something like this? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> well, the audiobook narrators primarily with mouth noise. Right. They're spending a tremendous amount of time cleaning up the mouth noise manually. I client I just worked with said. Not typical, or actually it is typical for him to spend up to eight hours per finished hour cleaning up his audiobooks. That's and I'm like, it ain't going to make any money, no, man. No. So I'm setting him up with the RX. And so the thing to figure out is which one do you need? Well, what's the difference between them? I mean, there's a lot of differences, but the one that really matters is one has a, well, they both have a declicker, but one has a mouth noise declicker. 
Wow. So the standard version, they came up with an algorithm directly targeting mouth noise. We've been using the standard declicker for years. It was developed for declicking vinyl records and right. stuff like that. And it does a pretty good job for a lot of people. But mouth clicks are at a slightly different frequency. Yeah, mouth clicks, they can be lower in pitch right. or they can be, they're more complicated. They're not just a very sharp click. You right. know? So this new version has come out. It, it's, it's really quite magical, but it's like three times more expensive to go up to that next version. So get yourself a demo of the standard version and try them both out on your voice. Try the declicker and use the mouth declick one after another and try them. And if the standard one works for you, then just go buy the Elements license for $129 versus the standard one, which is over $300. I think it's $350, something like that. And that'll save you a heck of a lot of money. So that's that's my recommendation there. But they're, the tools from Isotope are fantastic. Their RX tools are second to none. Very cool. All righty. Well, Dave Cravassier is going to be joining us in just a bit, and we're going to have a fun time talking to him and... Uh, if you got questions for him, throw them in the chat room. But we got more tech to cover right after this break, so don't go away. You're still watching VOBS? <laughs> You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. You want to be an audiobook narrator, but you don't know where to turn for to the for the best training? And the truth about working successfully with ACX, well, here's your golden ticket. Registration for the 2018 ACX Home Study Audiobook Masterclass is now open for a limited time at acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. You will get four weeks of absolutely transformational training via audio, video, and online support every step of the way. And you'll be led by David H. Lawrence the 17th and Dan O'Day, whose past students have narrated and produced close to 3,000 audiobooks on the ACX platform. Go to acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. And when you register before 9 p.m. Pacific on Tuesday, July 19th, David and Dan will pay your first $500 of your tuition. Act fast, acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. Do what you've dreamed of doing. Narrating audiobooks is part of your voiceover portfolio. Go to acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. That's acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. You have... Uh, Another toy you wanted to show, show and tell. I think. Show yes. and tell. I get to buy cool gadgets for clients that like blingy stuff in their studios. You don't buy is, any of this stuff. This do you? is no, somebody this else's is, stuff this all is, the time. I get to spend other people's money. It's, <laughs> I love doing what I do. This is the um, the Yellow Tech Mica mic arm, and if you're paying attention, you'll see these a lot nowadays. Like uh, on any time there's a newsroom or radio show, a radio studio the that's on show. camera yeah, yeah. they're probably going to have these because they well they look really freaking nice i mean they really do they look great the wiring is all internal the springs everything's internal you can lock the angle of the arm exactly where you want it it stays put they're they're really really nicely made arms i have a mini rant though for yellow tech and i've been to yellow tech's booths at nab Many times, done many videos. They they may know who I am at this point. Maybe they're listening. They see you coming. We'll hashtag the heck out of this. But you guys, 
I can probably understand how you can justify this in your mind that the mic cable doesn't have to have mic connectors on it. But this is an expensive mic arm and this thing is north of $300 US and it doesn't come with any mic plugs on the wires. Like no XLR terminal plugs. Nothing at all. And and I, I get it. It's going into a professional broadcast studio installed by professional studio installers who do this, you know, and they, they custom, but at least throw them in. I mean, if you're not going to at least throw them in like, or put them on and let us chop them off if we don't want them. Right. Cause it, I get to the client studio invariably I pull out of the box and I'm, I'm ready to walk out of there 10 minutes later. Uh, and I'm like, oh, I got a solder connectors on one, two, and three. All right. Which one does the red one go to? Uh, I, yeah, it's, no. it's, I'm okay. I'm whining. I'm ranting, but yep. guys, Come on, please. It's, right. it's not that big a deal. All right. Well, we have a tech question. Oh, goody. From our, our good friend, Fred North. All right. He says, and it leads off with the answer. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm still using Adobe Audition 1.5. Cool Edit Pro. Yeah. <laughs> cool Edit Pro. Just, 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 a, just a generation that past. Is actually, get, that is, yeah, they, yeah. They took Cool Edit Pro and they called it Audition. Yes. I, I have the... CC version, Which is a totally but I'm so comfortable element. with 1.5. Yeah. For simple voiceover tracks, are there any advantages to going to CC? Should I drop it in the trash? <laughs> Sorry, George, well you couldn't said, help Fred. it. Yes. Well, being someone who uses CC 2018, mm -hmm. I, I think it's important uh, to keep it updated. And 1.5... Adobe doesn't even service that anymore. They're, no, no, you know, they're not, not. going to give you any support. So if it yeah. goes down, they're calling you or me, and we're going to go, I, don't know, I never used 1.5. Come on yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, you know, the best answer is always upgrade. And 20, CC 2018 is really powerful. Uh, it, 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 just, it just works. Oh, I was losing waveforms today for some strange reason. But, you know, it, but I, they came Other back. Than that. Yeah, but they came back. Um, but yeah, it's it's actually very nice. It's it the the engine keeps getting faster and faster. The processing speed keeps getting faster and faster on it. And well, the spectral view, yeah, uh, and obviously and it, that's something that and it has the spectral view in case you don't want to invest the extra hundred and twenty four dollars for the essential version of Isotope. There's a great spectral and cleaning system uh, within Adobe Audition, which is equally as powerful. Uh, maybe it doesn't have all the all the tools. It's but how good. many tools it's do you like, need? It's like Photoshop for 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 audio. It's exactly you can highlight what it is. something you don't like and and br magic brush it, heal it out of there. Right, made by the people who make Photoshop, Photoshop. for photos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Fred, bite the bullet. I've been getting this a lot from people saying I'm so used to my old thing. As Elmer Fudd once said, and I think it was the one about the shoemaker. He says, a manufacturer who sticks to old equipment cannot compete and will fail. Hmm, interesting. Although he said it more like, like, like Yama Fudd. So, but anyway, um, the fact is, is you got to stay contemporary. And if you're using 1.5, it's a square stone wheel compared to uh, CC 2018. So. Can I disagree? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. No, I won't disagree, but I will say, I mean... This is this is the thing. When the longer you stick with an older tool, yeah. the longer you become accustomed to it, and it's hard to it's hard to move on. And this is the problem I run into all the time because I'm telling people to not upgrade all the time, and then we get to a certain point where, like, if they upgrade anything, like they buy any new piece of gear, any new software, mm -hmm. it's like a house of cards, and then they have to upgrade everything, and it becomes an all or nothing proposition. Right. So if you do stay in stay up to date with things over time you don't necessarily you aren't going to probably run into that day where everything stops working because you changed one thing that's but, the advantage of that right but if you're slow and you're careful and you maintain your computer and you keep up to date with things generally these those things don't happen yeah yeah i i, I remember when uh, audition 3 3.0 came out our good friend uh, john taylor and i yeah. went over to univision and sat in front of a bunch of radio producers, and we were teaching them how to use three, and showing them features in it that they would probably want to use in English. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Oh heck yeah! And these guys, um, um, 
they were all, you know, these guys are pros. This is all they do. And they were all using 1.5 and some of them even on two, mm -hmm. which anybody that knows the world of audition two was, a, was, was the vista of audition. It was really bad. Um, so they went right to three, but it, yeah, it, it's, it's challenging when you stay behind. I mean, Fred, you, if you just, start, you have it, just start try, using it. Try choosing it. it. Train yourself to use it and go, oh, I can do this. Oh, yeah. I can do that. Join, there's a Facebook group for it, for Adobe Audition. Yep. Um, that's very vibrant. There's a lot of people in there. And a lot of videos that you and I have both done on it. So Yeah, there's a lot of great training for it. And, you know, you may find there's something. Having 1.5 handy, it never hurts to have a backup. I'll tell you, upgrades happen, stuff happens. Like you, Dan just said, like I, I, I had no video, no, no waveform one day. To be able to go right over to 1.5 and probably have it still work is, is, is nice to have. Yeah, it healed itself anyway. Good. <laughs> Interesting thing, and then we can move on and get Dave on here because he's been sitting here for hours <laughs> listening to us babble on about all sorts of crap. Uh, hey, we were geeking out about his Google Pixel crazy, what is that thing again? The Pixel the Book. Pixel Book, yeah. Okay. yeah I was enjoying he can that. show that to us. But um, I had a problem with a headphone this week. Mm. I yanked on it and somehow I'm like, I thought I brought it. I thought I broke the, the plug. Normally that would right. be what would happen. So I take a scissors, I cut it, I buy, a, I go over to all electronics around the corner where you get all the used audio equipment you can find and solder it all in, take it in, make sure that I, you know, I, I don't burn all of the coating off, go into the kitchen. Marcy's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm fixing my headphones. Oh, okay. I believe you. Soldered it in. One channel still gone. I'm like, crap. I guess I did it wrong. Cut it again. Did the same thing over again, oh, shortening another half an inch. Soldered it all in one channel. And I'm like, what am I missing? And then I realized that when I had yanked on the cable, I had actually cracked the side of the, the mini plug on my AGO3. Hmm. Went in there, shoved a, an Allen wrench in there, pulled the thing back. Stereo came back. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. So troubleshooting is a process. Yeah, the moral of that story is troubleshoot everything. Don't assume anything, right? Because right? it was not right. what you thought. Right. It, it was just, it was kind of odd. Now, Mr. Yeah. Soman, my seventh grade power mechanics teacher at Kenmore <laughs> Middle School, actually it was Kenmore Junior High back then, said, this is how you troubleshoot a lawnmower. Okay. You got to have air. You got to have fuel. You got to have spark mm -hmm. in that order. Mm -hmm. So- if this thing's not starting, you start at, are we getting air? Yeah. Are we getting fuel? You mm -hmm. check the carburetor. Are we getting spark? Check that spark plug. No, I told you to not grab it while I'm doing that <laughs> exactly. thing. Exactly. <laughs> oh. It hurts. <laughs> the guy loved to torture us with all sorts oh, of stuff. But anyway, but there's a process. And with audio, yeah. everything is in a logical order. Well, I just glanced down the chat room. You may not be alone. Uh, Peter Bishop said, I started using or losing waveforms as well after the last upgrade of uh, adobe you got a glitch there remember that first part of the show i was saying um yeah. no i so what's that so i actually i want to know a little bit more about that yeah when that happens if you go and play back you hear everything it's there it's just there's just a flat line right, right. there's no waveform. Yeah, dave was here watching me and it happened and he says that's doing mine's doing it too because that waveform is a file it's right. called a pkf file right right, right. and Normally, like the fault is it saves these as little files that every time you save a file, you get a PKF file, right? right, right. You can go in there and uncheck a little box in the media drive, the, the preferences media cache or whatever the heck it is. Right. And you can turn that little thing off. Right. I wonder if that makes it better or worse. I have a feeling the engineers at Adobe have a large inbox of people saying, hey, my waveform yeah. is disappearing. Yeah. It'd be it'll be fixed by tomorrow morning. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see if that <laughs> makes any difference or, or, you know, or not there. All right. So, All righty. Well, you got to remember, there's only two people on God's green earth that have built more home voiceover studios than anybody. And listen to more people complaining <laughs> about their tech issues than anybody. And that would be... Myself and Mr. Widom here. Uh, so if you need help with your home studio, if you want to learn it from the ground up, if you are already a star and want a voiceover palace built, talk to this guy first. And yeah, where can, do they go? I'll put one of these in your studio. Yeah, and he'll maybe. actually solder and the plug on. I'll solder in. the plug on. Uh, you, to find me, you go to georgethetech.com or georgethetech if you like short, geeky URLs. All right. That works too. 
Dan, where do they find you? They can find me at homevoiceoverstudio.com, where you can drop off a specimen of your audio in the specimen collection cup. It's $25 now, but well mm-hmm. worth it. We'll go through your audio and make sure that it's working properly. And if it's not, we'll tell you so. All righty. Dave Cavassier is coming up in just a minute. So don't go away. We'll be right back. There he is. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. I just want to say thanks to Source Elements. You guys are just wonderful for supporting us all these years, and you create cool stuff. Source Connect. Source Connect is the primary tool these days, and it is definitely gaining momentum in terms of being up taken by producers and engineers in studios all the world around as the way to connect their talent to them so that their talent can be anywhere at any time and be able to do professional sounding recordings remotely. You go into your booth, you load the software, they connect to you or you connect to them. Think of it like Skype and you're in a high quality, high production value studio scenario. You can chat, you can, you can, uh, there's a way to have the audio automatically replaced if there's dropouts in the audio, which is increasingly rare these days. It's really quite amazing. If you want to get a demo of it, go over to source-elements.com. You can get a 15 day free trial of Source Connect right now of Source Connect standard. And you don't have to have one of those pesky little USB iLock thingies to use it. It's ready to go without. So you can license it right to your Windows or Mac computer. Thanks again, Source Elements. We appreciate it. And we'll be right back here with Dan and Dave. And we're back. You know, my guest... <laughs> Very good friend Dave Carvassier grew up on an honest-to-goodness Midwestern farm. He began his broadcast career at KCC Radio in Carlsbad, New Mexico, then moved to KEXO, a top 40 radio station in Grand Junction, Colorado, before he started his television career in Grand Junction at KJCT. No, you need to read all those back. Uh, (laughs) Later, Dave worked at TV stations in West Lafayette, Indiana, Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and Greensboro, North Carolina, before going to Las Vegas in 1985, where he served as an anchor at CBS affiliate KLAS until this spring, when he retired from the news game and started pursuing voiceover full-time. And he's also a founding member of World Voices Organization and its immediate past president. And let's welcome... Right in our studio, <laughs> Dave Carvassier. Big disappointment. Dave. <laughs> What's going on, Dan? Oh, it's great to have you here, finally. Here. Yeah, the we've fi- talked about this for months, years. years. I mean, we've only been doing the show for seven years. I just live up the road, you know. That's right, just up 15. You've had uh, some sort of a conflict, though? Uh, yeah, there was, a con- there was a contractual conflict. Uh, I, not really. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, now, your life has gone through great transition here. And, uh, and I'm not going to ask you how's retirement because I do not want to well, get beaten did. up. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I said, I'm not no, going to ask people, you that. Everybody's asking me that. And it's not, I realize they're being nice and they want to, yeah. they want to be cordial. Okay. But you get tired of the question after a while because I, I just left TV. I didn't really retire. Right. So, okay. Well, so minor distinction. All right. So, but after all that time at the anchor desk. How's the adjustment to home, a home-based so, business that I've been doing right. for years, and now you're seeing what the yeah. other half does? Well, you know, I've been doing voiceover for a long time, but yeah. I never could give it the time it deserved, you know, yeah. because I always had this other thing going on with right. three news deadlines a day. and So it's nice not to have to work for someone else. Mm-hmm. 
but I have to be really intentional about my day. We were talking about this earlier. You have, yeah. you have to set appointments with yourself and make sure that you have your day planned. Otherwise, it's 7 p.m. and you're going, where'd the day go? Right. Got to schedule you gotta, stuff. You got to be disciplined about your day. Right. So that's one thing I've really had to learn. But no, overall, it's been great. Yeah. Time. Time to spend with time, your wife, time with your dog. We're, we're, and still, all. we're still married after, you know, wow. six months of retirement. She, <laughs> she hasn't kicked me out yet. It's been great. It's good. Hey, you're an empty nester. It's time to enjoy Absolutely. your marriage. Absolutely. So, you know, that farm you mentioned that yes. I grew up on in Illinois. You're going out there. We're driving you? there. We're leaving Wednesday morning to drive there with our dog yep. and meet the family, spend July 4th on the farm. It's a quiet place. You hear the bullfrogs croak at night. It's nice. Right. It's nice and quiet. That's... That's something we don't get here in LA. <laughs> yeah, you don't get the bullfrogs. No, we, we, we get helicopters <laughs> yeah. and, and, and all that stuff. Yeah, that's great. So, well, enjoy that. No, it's, it's think, gonna be good. I think it'll be good decompressing. Might even time. look up Todd Ellis there in Carterville, Illinois. Cool. You know Todd? I don't know Todd. Well, I've heard his yeah, name. He's before. a voiceover guy. He lives, yeah. in, lives in the. Yeah, I've worked the, with him. Todd Ellis, good guy. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. look him up while I'm there. Virtually, Actually. of course. Oh. Uh, you're right. <laughs> we all know each other virtually in one way or another. Uh, do you miss doing the news? You know, I, I don't. I, In fact, I don't even watch the news anymore. It got to be very formulaic for me. So the four things you always see on the local news are uh, court cases, shootings, yeah. fires, murders, right. love triangles, which lead to murders. Right. And, and that creates the bulk of the news. So a half-hour newscast really is about 10 or 11 minutes worth of news. The rest is weather, sports, transitions, bumpers, right. bump in, bump, chatter. Right. 10, 12 minutes of news is all you get in a half hour newscast. Right. And it was very formulaic and it got to be to the point where I was getting a little complacent with that. And then it you get, show. then you get, then you get sloppy and sloppy is not a good place to be. Plus, well, I could go on and on. Yeah. There was a lot of reasons, but, uh, ownership and management changes at the station contributed. Yeah. That's it. That says story is it, old it's as It's what time. happened to radio ten or twelve years ago. It's yeah. happening to TV now. Twenty years ago, it was. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man, it was. It was a the total decentraliz- mess. It's a centralizing of the hubbing of operations from some other city. Yeah. That tells you what your market should be doing, and it's like, wait a minute, I live here. I know yeah, what. Yeah, I, you don't know. know what's going on here. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. Don't get me started. George and I had the honor of going on the set with That's right. a couple that of years was, ago. That, that was, was a lot of fun. A bunch of, of people have cool. uh, the, in from voiceover. And yeah. it's, it was a good operation. It was a great station. And it still is. It's yeah. just that um, it was time for me to go. It was okay. And and, and now, you're, now you're getting to live your life as <laughs> right. opposed to reporting on everybody else's. It, true. And, and, uh, but my, my wife says, look, don't you want to watch the news? I'm like, no, no, kind of been there, done that. It, it's not worth watching the news anymore. Yep. Yeah. Well, but one of the things you do, and it's one of the first things I do in the morning after I kiss and hug my wife, because I'm glad she's still there, <laughs> um, is I, you know, I grab my phone and start checking my email and seeing what I got to do during the day. Mm-hmm. And one of the first thing that pops up is this thing you do apparently late at night, every night. Every night. And that is your blog. My blog. And, and you've been doing that for I've a while. I've been doing it for 10 or 12 years. And I got into a routine of doing it almost every day of the week five days a week. And I, I, I'm just in a groove with it. I, and it's easy. And uh, I, I, I live my day thinking ahead as to what I'm going to write that night. And I never have a problem finding ideas. Um, they just present themselves. Or I'll, uh, I'll look online and see what's trending and see how I can relate that to voiceover business. Uh, and so uh, I sit down around 10, 11 o'clock at night, tap it out, schedule it to go out at 2.10 in the morning. And it's there in everybody's mailbox when they wake up. And and, and I see it there every morning. And it's always a good you know, that's read. That's very nice of you to say. No, it always is. <laughs> I look forward it's to it. It's made me a better writer, no question. Good. Yeah. I mean, but you've had lots of experience as a journalist yeah. and, and doing that. So it's just a, another short, tight deadline. Well, and that... the blogging business is it's different. Uh, and it's changing, too. Uh, you really have to kind of keep it economical. Because mm-hmm. people don't, they, you know, TLDR, mm-hmm. people don't have the time, really. They want to... Give me a message, make it quick, make right. it succinct. And By the way, what I do. I'm the one here to, to define these nebulous terms that you're using. Thank you. TLDR. Oh, TL right. TL semicolon, right? DR right. Means too long, didn't read. Right. Or is that right? Too That's long, right. don't read, or yes. too long, didn't read? D- didn't read. So it says, you see the TLDR version of something. Right, That's right. the short version. And, and and that's just the attention span today. Yeah. Even in videos or podcasts, and people go on and on. And like VOBS, I mean, it goes on for what, an hour? Hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say an hour and a half Tonight, too long. So, no, 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 no. Might I'm just saying, yeah. You get people come and go during the show, and they right. get what they need from it. Right. 
Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, you get into a routine and stuff. Now, from this blog, which is a great, how can they get to the blog, by the way? Corvo.com, C O U R V O.com slash blog. Okay. Slash. Slash. Forward slash. Forward slash blog. <laughs> right. Okay. So, out of those blogs, which you've been writing for a good 10 years now, mm -hmm. you wrote a book. More right. than so, just a voice. Tell us about it. So, that. Uh, this is 2014. I started putting together my best or most read blogs. I mean, it, you don't have to buy the book, it's all there in right. my archives. But it's in a very concise form, and it's all put together, bound, and, and it's got little niceties and links to it and stuff. And I published that in 2014. I don't think I'll ever get the money back that I put into it. It's very expensive to self-publish. Yes, it is. Uh, but it's been great. It, it establishes me as an author, and I get a lot of great feedback from people. I think it was the right move at the right time. You get goodwill uh, credits. Goodwill credits. And, <laughs> and then, I, uh, oddly enough, a lot of voiceover talent who have written books never voiced their own book. <laughs> so I narrated the book and sold it as an audiobook as well. And it's like, exactly. It seems like a no brainer to me, but I'm going to actually have a new edition of the audiobook coming out probably sometime this year. Cool. Well, that'll be, if, if you're driving across country, that's something I want to hear. <laughs> okay. You can listen to yourself on the way back to the farm. Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> All righty. Well, if you're just joining us, our guest is Dave Corvassier, who is a big time leader in our voiceover business and big time. Uh, oh, big big time. time. Yeah, yeah, he's really big. If you've got a question for Dave, Put it in the chat room, and Jack Daniel, our master of social media, will get it back to us, and we will relay that question to him. And Dave loves to talk about all sorts of stuff. So if you've got a question for him, and I know lots of friends are out there, please submit a question. Let's talk about our pet project, which <sighs> basically sucked the life God out bless of us you, for... For about six we're, years. We're one half of the founders I of, know. Uh, of Wovo. World Voices. You know, we all knew what we had to do when we're sitting in this car in Ventura. <laughs> the windows all steaming at Fafcon. Uh, yeah, this is what were your thoughts when we began this I, I experiment? I just remember that it needed it just our industry had reached a, a threshold where it needed this kind of representation. It needed a, an industry trade association that spoke for the members and spoke for the community. And and every profession reaches that crescendo, you know, where it just right. it reaches that critical mass where it just kind of comes out of the uh, of the sensibility of the community. And and we were lucky enough to think about it and put form to it. We each you know put two hundred fifty bucks into the original you know slate and and uh off it goes yeah now we got over 800 members yeah but we had all worked together before right i mean we had worked in another a previous faux organization iteration but, of something yes, like that yeah. uh, and went, uh, yeah but that wasn't our fault no, no it wasn't and then we just jumped in and said <laughs> let's start what we let's really do, wanted to start in the first place that's right and uh and now we st that was 2012. It's now 2018 Holy cow. and we have we had 850 members yep and uh, you served as president for three well, so years. So our first president did, Dustin Eba yeah. served ably for three years. And mm -hmm. I thought, well, I, okay, he set the press. I'm going to serve for three years too. So, but that just ended in May. Yeah. And now Peter Bishop is at the helm and man, whew, he's awesome. Yeah. For he, the first time in the history of World Voices Organization, all of our officers are actually not American. Holy cow. We got a Canadian, we got a Brit. Yeah. And but at least the president and vice president right. are and Canadian. The, he, uh, Peter's a Brit is British, although he's a Brit an Englishman in New York. <laughs> we and, have now Ramesh Matani, who's and, uh, international. The yeah. guy lives in the Canary Islands, but he travels the world. Yep, and a real expert. Uh, and in we got Julio Rivera. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah. yeah, so we've that's become. Cool. We're really really focusing on that. We meant to focus on that. We, we have been trying to get this off the ground as an international organization. It's hard because we're we're in the United States and we've we found our our home here, but it it is world voices. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and now we are. What did you learn as president? I, this one of the things I know as being a former president of another organization, <laughs> you learn stuff. Well, what were some of the lessons? I, you know, you learned? I mentioned this earlier as we were bantering before the show is uh, relationships. Relationships are the most fruitful and sometimes the most challenging of of our duties you know, dealing with members because they are the source of our inspiration and, and the work that we do. And yet they can be, they can be pretty persnickety sometimes. Yes, we so, know. So, <laughs> you know, you, you really learn to handle people. And I don't necessarily mean handle, I mean, just relate to people in a way they understand and, and, and make them understand that we're a volunteer organization. We have one paid staffer and she's overworked. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we, we get to stuff as fast as we can, but it does take some, some time and effort. And, you know, as volunteers, as volunteer board members, you and I both know we put put in 
multiple hours a week on this thing. Yeah. Have been for six years. And still do. And still do. And, and, you know, and we have a board meeting once a month, <laughs> right. and we you know, do all that business that needs to be done. And, yeah. But it's, I mean, it's been worth it, though. Oh, gosh. The dividends. And, and, I, and I hear that from our members, too. They're happy that we've done this. They're, they're glad that we're standing in the advocacy sphere. We know that we're standing and, and issuing the right opinions about things that come up. And you know, you know what I mean about VDC and, and the people that have uh, challenged us in our, our outlook. I mean, we, we don't always get everything right, but we really represent our members, I think, and we listen to them. And yeah. Yeah, it, all that it's it's been worth it for me, and I know it's been worth. Well, it for Dan's you. still vice president. I, I'm yeah. not an officer anymore. I'm still on the board, and you're a president they, emeritus. They you may still never have get rid of this power. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, look, and we're planning for WolvoCon in November. Yes, do and tell. I'm kind of the boots on the ground there in Vegas to help with that, and and it's it's so much fun. It's a lot of work to get a conference off the ground, but it's uh, wow, we got a great conference coming up. Yeah, we just had a great conference in Toronto too. A which mini con. Everybody yeah, was yeah, raving yeah. about that. That was good. And again, Dustin Ebar, our former president, uh, kind of handled that. And we had like 50 some people show up. Yeah. And it was our first international conference because yes. it was in Canada. I right. think that's another country, isn't it? It is. Okay. Your passport. <laughs> yeah, you still, you still got to have your passport. <laughs> Having lived on the Canadian border right. for 58 yeah. years, it's like, yeah, it's just another county. <laughs> you know, passport. 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 Here's my driver's license. Where you, you know. Yeah, it used to be. Where are you from? <laughs> Buffalo. Where are you going? Toronto. Okay. okay get yeah, on yeah, through. Yeah, no problem. Does, does, it ever, does it ever get any easier? Like conference after conference? Is there, I mean, like our show, it never gets any easier. Yeah. <laughs> no. No they're, no, they're never easy. And again, it's it's the relationships. It's the people you have to deal with. And you just have to be good at that. And and there's a lot of detail. Oh, my gosh. The details uh, that go into a conference, I'm, I'm finding out. Because Dustin pretty much handled our last three or four of them by himself. Right. And there's there's an advantage to that, too, because he didn't have to go to committee. Now we're doing it by committee, which takes, mm. you know, five or six people agreeing on every decision. Sure. And that can be a challenge, too. But you also get better ideas coming out of that. Right. And more people, right. to you know, to putting their hands yeah. to the work. But we've hired a full-time organizer. Event planner. Yep. Event planner for this. Yeah. So. And she's a Vegas person. She's a familiar with the, you know, the challenges of throwing a conference in Vegas. And it's yeah. all good. Yeah. And and if you've ever, if you've ever watched our show from WoWocon, which we've done several times. It's it's a great conference. I mean, there's there's voice conferences. This one is more dedicated to... Well, it's member-driven. You it's can only go if you're a member. Right. Um, and it's about... A lot of it is about the organization right. and what you can do to contribute. Because that's the thing we're really looking for is not... We want to be able to serve our members, but we also want to be able to have them have the, some say in how things go. And that means sometimes... When you come up with a great idea, oh, well, that's great. Can you do that? <laughs> exactly. That's a great idea. Can you help with that? Uh, and, and really, but that's where it comes from, because we get the passion from our members, and they need to apply that passion to our, our ultimate goal, which is making it work. Right. So if you're interested in joining World Voices, by the way, <laughs> uh, it's real easy to do. Go to our website, which is world-voices.org. Go there and click on Join Today. <laughs> Pretty easy. Green yeah. box. Yeah. Yep. And we've got lots of cool stuff that we do there. I mean, we've, we've got the, you know, the studio uh, approvals, which are fascinating. Uh, voiceover.biz, which is our uh, professional our membership directory. directory, where it is, <laughs> but it's searchable by genre of stuff that you do. Yeah. And it's a perk for our professional no members. members. It's yeah. not meant to be the reason why you want to join Volvo. Right. You join Volvo because you want to help us with our mission. Uh, there's there's some confusion about that sometimes. We get, you know, email from people. Well, I want to join VO.biz. Well, you have to be a member first. Well, what do I have to do? Because I want to get on VO. Well, VO.biz is just an aside, folks. It's just a perk. I mean, it's a good one, <laughs> and we love it. But but uh, we, we want people that are going to be doers for our organization. Right. So what do you see as the future of our organization? As, uh, as you were president, what were some of the things you saw that were areas that we were probably going to start to cover? I, I think where we really have to focus some energy is on relations with SAG-AFTRA mm -hmm. uh, and solving some of the issues with um, <clears throat> Fiverr and Upwork and Thumbtack and, and you know coming to some kind of consensus that it's not going to go away. We've got to come up with a plan for people who are, are consistently working on those sites and, and you know, we can't. We can't be the VO police and say, well, you can't do that. Right. Because it's never going to go away. we got to find a way to incorporate that into the community of voice actors and still keep our professionalism. Right. I think it's all, one of the most important things that we do is we educate. 
and we educate our members. And then the most powerful force we have is our members educating those who hire us. Mm-hmm. You know, especially when it came to uh, you know to VDC and the stuff with Voice Bank, I think it was a very effective strategy. And a lot of producers have said, "Oh, they do that." We didn't say, "Don't do business with them." Right. This is what they do. Here are the facts. Well, it's kind of and, up to us, to, you know, to be a clearinghouse for giving them information and fodder for them to use, ammunition for them to use in their individual contact with their clients. Right. You know, say, hey, have you tried this? You know, here's a here's a document with some ideas you might be able to use. And and when you have a conversation with a client or a producer or a prospect, have that conversation one on one. That's that's really it's a grassroots movement that's gonna it's gonna work in the end. Yeah. Uh, once again, we're talking with Dave Crevassier, and uh, we're talking about Wovo, and we're talking about the voiceover business, and uh, what's important to you. If you've got a question for Dave, he'll be happy to answer it. Throw it in the chat room right now, and Jack will make sure we get that. There was a town hall meeting recently that our friends at the Global Voice Acting Academy put on. Mm-hmm. You were there, and Peter, Peter Bishop was on there. And the Voiceover Agent Alliance. And the Voiceover Agent Alliance. How did that go? What went on there? I mean, I've read some of the comments, but I actually haven't seen the video. You know, it, it. we could have filled five hours. I yeah. mean, there's, there was so much impressive intellect on the panel there that we could have just gone forever. But again, attention spans. Uh, however, I think it really broke a kind of a ground for uh, a future template that we can use over and over and over again. Like Rate's Roundtable came mm-hmm. very close to that. Uh, but I think GVAA plans to do more of that, to have these kind of webinars again and again, and to have uh, distinguished panels come on and talk about these challenges and their compensation rates and, and in the future of uh, getting jobs, keeping jobs, working with clients, making them educated. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of yeah topics <laughs> that we yeah. can talk about. Well, what were some of the things that were said there? Uh, we had, uh, you know, as a VO agent alliance, we had a couple of agents on board, and they were, they talked about the challenges they have dealing with clients, and and how they have that conversation with their clients about this is this is not an appropriate rate. Uh, go back to your client and let you know let's talk let's talk about a better rate, and and how they're getting um, a little pushback on some of that, and you know it's a changing industry. It's never going to be the same. Uh, I I'd say. 90% of voice actors total, and nobody knows how many really there are. Like I'd say 90% of mm-hmm. voice actors don't go to somebody else's studio to record. They have their own home studio, as you know. Uh, and I think that's really the difference between L.A., SAG-AFTRA, voiceover actors, and the other 48 states. I'm putting New York City in there somewhere, too. Yeah. Um, and so there is this division between the rank-and-file voice actor who does e-learning at home. sag is never going to get into regulating corporate e-learning jobs yeah, they just aren't yeah. so but they still pay pretty good so there's this schism i think between those sag aftra and la people and the rest of the 48 states i i it's very glaring to me um and even to the point where some sag after workers say uh, you aren't a professional unless you're in the union and i i take exception with that i think there's some and great I've heard some of them and it's like well um i understand what the definition means to them and i, I get that uh, but there's there's some work to be done there in, in ironing that out. Yeah. What do you think? The, the, what do you think that it is that SAG is not, is missing here? I, they, they don't have a compelling reason for anybody else to join outside of L.A. Why? Right. I, I'm, I'm doing great as a non-union actor. I'm making good wage. I'm finding prospects. I don't want to have to send my check to a paymaster and have, uh, you know, 20 percent taken out for P&H and uh, and uh, taxes and, and have to pay the, uh, the paymaster. I, you know, I, there's just no compelling reason for someone from Omaha to join the union. And, and so, you know, tell us, let us know. Why, why is it important that we should join? Right. And they're not telling. They're saying, because yeah, no. it's great. Now, they've, been, they've, done, they've made really good progress yeah. with audiobooks, yeah. video games. Okay, yeah. now what? Right. What about just regular? Well, they look out, they look out for their L.A. people. Right. I, you know, I'm sorry. I, I really see the schism. I see this... This difference between those people in L.A. who are making the really high-dollar jobs in voiceover and the guy from Poughkeepsie or the guy from, you know, Atlanta who right. is not a union guy. Right. And those are the people that were represented by uh, the, I think so. You know, the guys who are out in the hinterlands and flyover country. <laughs> the flyover <laughs> states. Yeah, yeah. But there are some exceedingly talented There's people out great there. People and they're there. missing – a lot of the producers here are missing out on some great talent because they're like, well, I'll just use the guys we use. And in the, in, in the absence of, of any kind of policy there – more people are going to turn to Upwork and Thumbtack and Fiverr, and because right. it 
it's so easy. The internet is where everybody goes anyway. Right. So when you see the P2Ps being successful or when you see these these uh, Odesk and, and places like that being successful, it's because people naturally turn to the internet to get their work. Right. It's the freelance gig economy. It is. It, so yeah. it's, have, it, you can't blame them. I have a little, a little interesting aside, and I'll, I'll keep names anonymous because I just don't want you know, getting anybody in trouble, but... I was at a, a set. I was at a, a a party that was in a studio last week, and uh, ran into somebody in the hallway. He, he immediately started questioning Maxine, who was with me, about uh, her business and what she, what she's doing there. Who you know, he was, he was he was curious about what she was up to, but more so when he started to realize that she was a voice actor, he, his questioning went right. I mean, right into like, are you union? Do you use pay to plays? And he was very like pointed about it. Mm. And it was like, we don't like those pay to plays around here. And it feels, and it's, it's clear that the people that are, that are part of the machine here, the industry of voiceover, mm -hmm. the studios, the engineers, they're the ones that are feeling it probably when there's less of that work being funneled into those I, studios. I and that's, they're, they're feeling that they, and they're blaming finally. that finally starting to feel the impingement yeah. on their business model. Yeah. And I think, you know, the the union probably is noticing, but they're so slow to react to it. Um, what we hear is that there is a new VO division within the union and that there are some, some wonderfully gifted intellectual people that understand our issues that are part of that committee. So, yeah, God bless them. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to seeing what kind of fruit that bears. Yeah. Um, but... VO has always been kind of a redheaded stepchild for the union. What is it? A subset of on-camera work. So, right. I think we deserve our own attention. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it would be great if they represented everybody. You know, but they they make their money off because, Tom Cruise and <laughs> and Melissa well, McCarthy. But a lot of the issues we have in the rank and file in the yeah. other forty-eight states, you know, with compensation rates, that's answered by the union. Right. But why do we want to join the union? I don't see a compelling reason other than that. I mean, and and they are not going to be able to regulate corporate e-learning stuff they just they're not going to start getting into a contract with ge or chrysler or if they stay in business or, or government yeah, they, <laughs> yeah. They, it's just not going to happen so they're i'm not sure what the answer is yeah well it's the answer i i think is dependent on you and me and everybody else Let's, as individuals because this is an entrepreneurial business and mm -hmm. i think you know as important as it is that we have an organization and there's the union and that sort of thing it still comes down to people being individual business people and making their own business model that's going to work best for them, as opposed to relying on somebody else. With the reminder that the we reminder. don't work in a vacuum. Right. That everything you do as an individual businessman does affect your fellow colleague in voiceover. Right. I was in a Twitter uh, conversation with a gentleman <laughs> last night about this, and, and I I'd kind of grew a little bit weary of seeing his endless Fiverr promotions on Twitter. And so I said, why even charge $5? It's, just give it away. It's, what's the difference? And, uh, you know, he took uh, umbrage of that statement, but uh, and we got into a conversation about it. But this is what I'm saying. It's not going to go away. We've got to find a way to represent our... It's the same for photographers and graphics artists and, and writers. They're all feeling the pinch of the uh, intrusion of, of, of the Internet now for how many years on their profession. Yep. And got to do something. Once again, Dave Cavassier is our guest. And uh, if you've got a question for him, in the chat room. We've got to keep this conversation going. But we're going to take a break right now, and we'll be right back with him and all your questions and more of our questions and more stuff right after this. Style. Power. You're watching the home of the NFL. The all-new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, three in the morning coughs, an all-new American crime story tonight on FX. This week only, it's Pasta Fest at Olive Garden. Heart rate, prime. Blood pressure, perfect. I grew up with the classics, and now with StubHub, I can get authentic tickets to the best shows. The all-new Chevy Cruze from $16,995. Be inspired, then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at Sephora. This week at Home Depot, it's our Garden Fest sale with up to 30% off all garden tools, sod, and seeds. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. All right. 
What is this thing? This thing is a Harlan Hogan Porta Booth Plus. <laughs> This is a great thing. It actually still has the last flight on here. <laughs> was that Atlanta? And uh, this is from, yeah, I think this is from Atlanta. Anyway, great little unit to have because unlike some other porta booths that are out there or faux porta booths, um, this one actually fits into the, the luggage. Overhead. The Well, first off, it fits in, as you can see, the actual, is your bag bigger than this thing at the airport? Uh, it fits right in there perfectly, you'll notice. Harlan went way out of his way to make sure of that. But in the overhead bin, it fits right in there. Nice. And the other ones don't, supposedly. You know, unless you carry them on your back and and sit on them or whatever. It's a big plus. It is. And it's it's a great unit, not only because it's, it's it folds out and becomes a nice little sound uh, reflection absorber, uh, it also has lots of storage in it. You can put anything in here. Well, not anything, but almost everything. That's where you keep your pot, man. You can, yeah. shh, quiet. We don't, we're not, we don't talk about that. <laughs> um, and uh, but also the side pockets. Love it. This thing does not fall apart. It's made it's out durable. of durable, great durable nylon, and it's made with real Oralex. And uh, it does a great job with special technique. You can use this in a, a hotel room or your mother's closet or wherever it is that you happen to be and uh, take all your stuff with you. The computer fits in here, your microphone, all your equipment fits into this thing, and it goes right into the overhead bin. And it's, nice going, Harlan. Yeah, it's great. So uh, if you want one of these, there's only one place on God's Green Earth you can get one, and that is voiceoveressentials.com. Go over to voiceoveressentials.com. The easiest way is to just go to the bottom of the page here, look way down there, and there's a picture of Harlan Hogan talking into his porta booth and uh, in 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 the rack that he has made specially for that. And uh, click on that; it will take you to voiceoveressentials.com, and it will allow you to purchase one of these. So when you go on the road, you can have one too, and share it with your friends at a conference or something like that. Set it up on an ironing board, <clears throat> on your voiceover shrine, and uh, it, it will do that. Go over to voiceoveressentials.com and get one of these, because these are the original, and these are the ones that work, and these are the ones that fit in the overhead bin. Thanks for being our sponsor for over seven years, Harlan. We love you. Thanks for being with us. Go buy a Porta Booth Plus right now. And we're back with Dave Crevassier talking about the voiceover business and... Uh, it's fascinating how you've you've all the things that you've done in you know over your career. I mean, you did the news, and you found yourself in a leadership position with Wovo and the community. How did you how did you work all that? Yeah, that's a good. <laughs> that's question. why you retired. It, 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 now it wasn't from an that. intentional thing. It just <laughs> kind of developed. Um, uh, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I I go back to that car in Ventura, California, at Fafcon with you with the other three guys, and we just had this. This passion, this need for creating this thing, and and once once you and I and the other two were connected with it and had invested our reputations in it, how could we abandon it? You know, and, and as the challenges grew and the and the time commitment grew, we stayed with it. It just was it was important to us. We still are passionate about it. We still believe in it, and and so here we are, uh, Wovo, six years later, and and uh, we feel like it's having an impact on the community. Yeah. Now, one of the things that everybody says you're an expert at, you just use this stuff. I mean, I'm. Anytime I talk to you, it's like, hey, have you tried this? Have you tried this? And you're always blogging about <laughs> yeah. these different things that, that are out there. Uh, you know, try this program. George try once this. said that he, if he gets stuck and without any topics for VOBS, he goes to my blog. <laughs> I have done that. He has done that. See? See? It's all there. You know, so, yeah. I, I just, uh, I, I guess there's uh, a part of me that just loves trendy things and the latest new gadget and the shiny yeah. object. But you're not a geek. You just like you I just like geek. toys. I know. Uh, I, well, I like toys, but I like to know how they work too. Uh, and so I kind of just stay on top of that stuff. And and I, I when I find new iterations of things, like from Cool Edit Pro 1.5 to you know CC 2018, uh, I just I like to play around with it, see what it does. Sometimes it loses its allure pretty quickly, but yeah, um, uh, you know, just yeah, I like, love to play with the latest new thing. All right. Well. In that in that vein, in that spirit, JDK uh, and all of his kids, what's the most effective way to use Twitter 
as a voiceover yeah, talent in good, Europe. And, you know, it's the most challenging social media platform to voice actors. I see it time and again. I don't. I don't even mess with Twitter. I hate Twitter. I don't, I don't kids what do I do with, with Twitter? Yeah. I, you know, people don't know what to do with it, and it is a challenge because, well, for one thing, they keep changing all the uh, the algorithms, and then they keep changing the platform, and and but so does Facebook. So. Uh, Twitter. Twitter is a conversation. If you want to uh, be on Twitter, you need to have your brand be consistent and you need to join in the conversation. You need to answer. You need to talk. You need to be in conversation with people who approach you. If you want to use it as a tool for prospecting, start chasing after the people who make decisions about hiring voice actors. Start chasing them and start having a conversation with them. Don't come to them right away and say, hey, you can hire me on Fiverr. <laughs> Go to them and say, I really like the last product you did. I like the commercial. I know you guys worked hard on that or something. Start a conversation. Next thing you know, you gain some trust. And after you gain some trust, maybe the jobs will come. How do you start a conversation on Twitter? Well, it's easier on Twitter than it is, say, on the phone. I mean, I yeah. call people on the phone and they're like, wow, Dave Cravassier called me. Well, why not? We used to do that. That was the only thing. We, right. You know, now. Had to dial is, it, so but, I think social know. media is actually easier to approach people. Uh, you know, uh, anonymously or, right. or to find, you know, for the first time as a, as a first time usage. Um, yeah, just just open it up. What, what can you lose? I mean, if you know their business uh, as well as you do being a voice actor, knowing a production house, knowing their business, they're going to welcome you, your knowledge and your understanding of their business. They, they love that. Yeah. It's amazing how many times you'll, you know, you book a job or someone will call you and say, I found you on the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like your Twitter feed. Well, you yeah. should ask where they found You know, if you get a job out of nowhere, you ask, I, you know, where'd you find me? Where'd you find me? I mean, was it my website? I need to know. Was it my SEO that was working? Was it my Twitter feed that was working? It's a really important to have those metrics. You know? Yeah. Jack Daniel has a question. and seeing Who's as Jack he's, Daniel? That he's over there. Oh. Uh, and since the audience cam is now operating in perfect <laughs> form, Jack, you may now ask your question. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome. Dave. Um... I do that every time, every guest. That it's not funny. It wasn't funny then. I'll just keep doing it. <laughs> but Dave, regarding Wovo, other than with Spanish-speaking countries, where I know participation is growing fast, where do you see hot spots of interest in VO around the world? Well, it's easy for us to make the move into the UK because it's English-speaking, and that's you know it's great for us American people and the Canadians as well. Uh, but we see Australia, Israel, Spain, Germany, you know, first-world countries that that are. Uh, you know, active in their marketing and in the gig economy, uh, internationally engaged. That's where we see us moving into easiest. Now, Russia, that's going to be a challenge. China, uh, again, you know, it's uh, it's it's kind of an unknown to us. Um, but you know, we take small steps and and grow as we can. Yeah, and and there's obviously a voiceover business in Russia because we we keep. I keep seeing Russian letters in my my email. Yes. Hacking uh, on the one. Yes. <laughs> you know, usually when people say, what's what's the problem? Well, it's either Windows 10 or it's the Russians. Yeah. But does that answer your question? <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. I, you know, yeah. We, just, we just have to keep chipping away at it because we think there's a, boy, when people find out that they can be part of Wovo from Uruguay or, or Bolivia, they're excited because it gives them legitimacy as part of an international organization. We love that and, and we welcome them. Yeah. And it's just fun to talk to them. Mm -hmm. And we've got members. We've learned so much. All oh my gosh, over the yeah, world. Yeah, in we really the Philippines do. and, and yep. you know, now Canary Islands and Turkey. Yeah. George? Next question. This one comes in from what do Devox. We have here? Devox. Hey, Devox. Dave, what are some work habits and tricks you learned from doing news and TV that carried over to doing VO? Hmm. So the the magic of TV is that you are uh, on camera and people get to know you and feel comfortable with you and begin to trust you if you're consistent in your approach and your branding. And that's what I would say you need to bring with you uh, in your voiceover work is to be consistent in your branding, be personable, be helpful, pay it forward, offer to be a resource, uh, be friendly. Uh, you know, I'm 65. And I could easily slip into the grumpy old man syndrome. Ah, oh, I remember back in 1952, we didn't do that kind of thing. But you know, you can't do. People don't want to hear that. They want to be. They want you to be friendly. I'm. I always try to, uh, you know, have this appearance of being helpful and friendly, and at least to listen. Uh, and I think that works in your favor in the end. Hmm. Okay. Well, sometimes. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, I, there's a lot of us old timers that uh, right. that like to talk about that stuff. And I when know. you're talking to a client that was also there in that era. 
you know, like you, you can find some common ground there if you yeah. find you know a client who you know graduated from the same college you did or has the same kind of dog breed you have. I mean, there <laughs> use that. I mean, yeah. use that as a point of relation, but don't go into. I, back in 78, oh, wait a minute, I, I think it was 76, or was it 75? I don't remember. But anyway, about, you know, and pe- people <laughs> just good start Stewart, glossing way, over. Yeah. You just, you know, this, this, the culture as it is now, is the attention span is so short, and people are very self-absorbed in their careers, and yeah. y- you, you want to just get to their interests and what they need. Is there anything um, technical from the two, from the two worlds that cross-pollinate, <clears throat> other than just the fact that you're involved in technology? And know how to Doing use a VU it. meter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, it's a it's been a double edged sword because uh, after doing news for thirty five years or more, I, I've I've mastered this delivery that has a certain cadence that that at the same time is very deliberate and very understandable, but it's not conversational. Mm-hmm. And and you probably hear it in my delivery right now. And I've I've had to get coaching to try to lose that, and I'm not sure it's been entirely successful because I keep hearing. Uh, in feedback that sounds too robotic, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm like, well, okay, but w- I, did you understand it? Well, it doesn't matter. They want right. conversational. Right. And You're so the same thing that, that the folks from radio, I yeah, guess. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's and, and it's, it's a common, thing. it's a common criticism. I, and I understand. Uh, so it's been, it's been good and bad, but I think in general, it's led me to an understanding that attention spans are short. People want a decent presentation and they want to, they want to hear about themselves. They want to know what, uh, what you can do to help them. Yeah. How many demos do you have? And how many different genres? Uh, I'd probably have 10 or 12. I just I just did a new uh, news promo, affiliate news promo demo. Hmm. Uh, because I figure, well, if there's any area of voiceover that would accept a news delivery, it would be news. affiliate news promo. <laughs> right. So I'm going after that. And in fact, uh, Promax BDA is in Vegas this week. Tomorrow I'm going to go... Try to knock on some uh, on some doors and, and talk to some people and maybe get in. It's a tough business because TV news budgets are yeah they're dropping, and uh, you know if a if a if a network uh, or or a corporate wonk who decides about promo voices can get you to voice fifty stations for a lower price, yeah they're going to do that instead of choosing individual ones and getting optimal prices for it. Right. It's it's yeah there's. There's some challenges. Yeah. What other areas would you like to examine? Documentary. Yeah. I feel like that's probably something that I could really well, do you, well. You, and as, as a journalist, you probably yeah. have. So, you know, I tried the audiobooks. I really, that's why I got into voiceover originally was audiobooks. And uh, I enjoy them. They are a challenge to do uh, performance-wise, creative, creatively. Uh, but, man, there's so much work involved. Yeah. And, and, it, and I wish the pay was better. I, you know, I ultimately gave it up. I did about 50 titles. And I ended up giving it up. Uh, and I understand why people are passionate about it and why they want to do them. I did, I, I do them occasionally. I did one um, last month for an, an outfit. It was just out of nowhere. They just dropped it in my lap, and I asked for the top price, and and they uh, they they agreed to it. So I thought, well, that's worth my while. Mm-hmm. Uh, but otherwise, I try to stay away from them because it just takes too much time and doesn't really return on the investment. Yeah. Fred North, who had a question earlier, said, "Dave, you were in the union as a TV anchor." Some of my TV friends here in Louisville are. So, and that's true. There are markets where uh, unions are prevalent. And often it's uh, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers or uh, other communication workers unions. And SAG-AFTRA is in the bigger markets, L.A., New York, Miami, Chicago, those kind of uh, places. I never had to join the union as a broadcaster. Uh, I never worked at stations where the union was uh, strong for performers or talent, as they called it, <laughs> loosely. Uh, <laughs> and so I never really had to join SAG-AFTRA uh, or SAG or AFTRA as, as a broadcast talent. Uh, just never worked in one of those markets. How did you get into the union then? Uh, so before they merged, uh, I had already, uh, I've done a couple of uh, film credits and I had been Taft Hartley in a couple of times. You know, they only let you do that once or twice and then they right. say, well, look, you got to choose. Uh, so I joined before the union fees got really expensive, and before they merged, I joined as an AFTRA uh, member, and now I'm SAG AFTRA. Yeah. You, now you you had a you had which movie was it? Because I remember seeing the clip <laughs> of you being uh, on TV casino. doing the news. Yeah, it was casino, casino, casino right. right? And uh, Robert De Niro. I was in a scene with Robert De Niro, but I I never met him. Figure that one out. Yeah. So I was in a TV <laughs> monitor with him in the room, and it was me on the TV with him in the room. Uh, so I was terribly typecast as a newscaster, but what a kick it was doing that sh- that show. I'll, I'll bet it was. Yeah, I bet it was. It's fun. Um, 
Thanks so much for being Are with us Are you kidding tonight. me? This is way overdue. Yeah, it absolutely is. <laughs> it's I mean, a delight. There's so much more we could talk about, but... You know, that's stuff you and I will talk about see, on the you, phone. You, you ought to see how they do this show. I've been watching for the last couple hours as they prepared for the show. Yeah, do you have any all tips, All the work the that way? goes into it. <laughs> <laughs> it really, Is no, there anything these we These guys work really hard at this show. It's it's amazing. It's good stuff. You guys do a good job. <laughs> well, we have fun doing it. But it's yeah. fun having great guests. Hey, Thanks for being with us, Are you man. kidding me? I love it. All right. Thanks. Dave Carvasi, how can they get a hold of you? Corvo.com. C-O-U-R-V-O.com. All righty. Thanks for being with us. All right. All right. George and I will be right back to uh, wrap things up and maybe say a couple of other things. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. And we're back. And we are definitely back, mm -hmm. for the time being, anyway. Uh, thanks again to uh, Dave Gravassi, a, a, you know, a great friend who I talk to fairly regularly just because of business and stuff like that. But what a great guy to have on the show who really is like one of us. He's even put me up at his place one time. I mean, put you know? me up there, put us both up there. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, so cool. You know, sharing a room with you, which, you know, and I oh, shared a room I with him. I wasn't going to say. And <laughs> at least there were, you know. We know each other that well. We that well. Yeah. We have shared rooms a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. And I, 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 I roomed with him at VO Atlanta this last time. And, and you were always the last one. Oh, oh, when you, oh the, we did that two years ago or three years ago. You roomed with me at VO Atlanta. I and you were always the last one to come back. Yes. <laughs> you were the you were the one that was out, and I'm like, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I like to party at those things. People like to talk to me, and you know, it's like Fun. they buy the beer. Oh, talk. you're set. That's right. I'll probably <laughs> never get another free drink the rest of my life. Next week on this show, and we've been wanting this gentleman on our. He's been on the show many times. Yeah, but from New York. That's right, remotely. You know, you know remotely, you know, via Zoom. But no, he lives here in L.A. now. And he's coming to visit us in our studio, big time star, you know, on a, an Emmy award winning television show, Jane the Virgin, uh, the Virgin, it might be a version of a Virgin, <laughs> Anthony Mendez will yeah. be here. Great guy. Uh, it'll be fun having yeah. him here in the studio and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk with him about all the new stuff that's going on with him because he keeps busy, doesn't he? He's a busy actor and he knows his way around the studio too. He, he loves tech. Yeah, he will talk tech with us all day. Like, all right, then we'll know, talk. So some, we'll talk more tech we'll next talk week. We'll talk mics. We'll talk about the mic he uses, and absolutely. In fact, the, the only time I ever met him in real life, like, yeah. was at AES, mm. at the Audio Engineering Society trade show here in LA, and that's that. I interesting timing. That was he was telling me I'm here in LA because I'm being casted in this new show called Jane and the, the Virgin, Virgin, and I'm yeah. here to meet the cast or whatever it was. Right. I can't remember what it was. You'll tell us the story, Anthony, but yeah. it was a cool moment to see him because he was like, it was that moment when he got cast. Yeah. I, I met him at voiceover mastery last year and he came up to me. And I'm dead. Oh, Anthony Mendez. Great to meet you. Finally. You know, and we, it's like, you know, the person when you've, you've interviewed them several times and you know exactly what it is they're about and stuff, but He's probably got some new stuff going on, so that'll be really exciting. So make sure you're here for that. Speaking next week. of cool people yeah. that we've run into lately, yes, at that party last week, the yep. one I mentioned earlier, yeah, Corey Burton was there. Really? If you don't know who Corey Burton is, <laughs> type your type his name into IMDb and have your jaw hit the floor. This guy is he's incredible. Yeah, and he started working professionally as a voice actor when he was 17. Yeah, 
But what's interesting about this guy and why I know about him is because he's, he's very vocal about his tastes in things like microphones. Right. And he goes so far as to actually hand carry or bring in a suitcase his own mic that he brings to his sessions at Disney. Mm. He doesn't like the mics they have at Disney. <laughs> he brings his own microphone. This guy is amazing, and, but super humble and nice. And I cornered him. Yeah. And hopefully we get him on the show. That would be he, fabulous. He, he was a little reticent about the scheduling, the challenge of it. I'm sure he's invited to be on a lot of podcasts. And there's so many now in voiceover and acting and animation. But, right. Um, we're working on it. Catherine's being gentle but firm. <laughs> she's, you know what? Catherine's amazing because she's just persistent. Right. I mean, she, she will follow up with people until they say, yes, we will get you. We will get you. Get you on the show here. Who are our donors of the week? And we thank them at a, the front and at the back. That is a darn good question. Um, oh, and actually, as I'm looking at the donors, I see a question came in at the 11th hour, actually, from Tim Rutledge. Uh, I'll read it real quick. Maybe okay. it's something you can answer because okay. we've got a little bit of extra time. What's your take on uh, diffusers in home studios? People talk about acoustic treatments, panels, bass straps, but I don't hear a lot about diffusers. Do you need it? Do you need a diffuser panel in your home studio setup? Does it depend on the size of the studio? Thoughts? Uh, let's, well, no, here, I, I, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail, here, but I, we, we we can sort of discuss this. But. Okay, so <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, so diffusers are generally reflective surfaces that break up the sound into a million directions a bookshelf full of books awesome diffuser yeah great diffuser yeah. you got to pull some of the titles out make, yeah you don't want to make an encyclopedia even. britannica over and over <laughs> right, you don't want right. a wall <laughs> you want to have random awesome it takes the sound and it scatters it around does it work well in a small voiceover booth i have to be honest i've spent very little time playing with experimenting with studying diffusers in small studios the, the idea being that it will make a small room sound a little bit larger, and that theoretically should be good. But yeah. I don't. I haven't had a lot of chance to play with it. Right. But the thing is, is if you look at your average wedge, it is both a diffuser and an absorber. That's the intention. That's why it has that corrugated shape. At least this one does. Right. Exactly. Um, you know how much diffusing it really does versus di absorbing. I think RLX is the only one that really knows that because it's their proprietary design. Right. This is primarily considered absorbing. Um, but, you know, the, and the other reason I think diffusers aren't that popular is just because they're a lot more expensive. Right. If you buy a diffuser panel, they're much more complicated to build, and so they tend to cost a lot more. But, um, you know, to be continued. Yep. To be, because I, I need to, I need to focus on that some more. Yeah, we'll find, we'll find out. Yeah. And this will make a nice hat. <laughs> um, um, donations, by the way, why we're here, Tracy H. Reynolds, uh, Mage Pro, which is, uh, Thomas Machen. Um, man, what else we got here? Cause we got a lot of them. We got to, we got to say goodbye to, see you, Jack. Thanks for coming. Um, uh, he tried to sneak out, but yet I had to say goodbye. Eric Araconi. <laughs> these are names, guys and gals. You hear them every week. They're amazing to donate the way they do. Eric Aragoni, Andrew Kaufman. I think all of those folks donate almost every single week. Going on down here, we also had donations from Patty Gibbons. She's on Thanks, a Patty. Subs subscription, sending in a few bucks every month. Uh, Brian Page also, um... You know what? Some of these amounts of money are so small that they probably just completely forget that they even... They may not even watch the show, but they send us money anyway, which is really nice. Thank you. Like my dad, five bucks. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. I'm not supposed to say the dollar amounts, but what are you going to do? I once, Amanda Fellows, sustaining member. Um, a lot of names that I've said before because you guys are really kind to us, and we appreciate it. And if you want to support us that way, if you want to give us a little extra bump, if you like the guest, like something we talked about that week, particularly right there on the page. I think it's below us. It might move. We have a new website coming, so it, Next the subscription week. button may be in a different there. place. But yeah. just uh, we appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for your donations. And, and, and it helps. And if you've noticed, the show technically is a lot tighter now. It's coming we, along. We had a few issues over the early part of 2018, yes. but I think we have them all solved. I really have to thank everybody that comes and watches this show live. Yeah. It's very, very, I mean, as you should probably know, it's very important to us that we do the show live. Yes. It's, and we go to great pains. To do it live. To make this show happen live. I mean, it is quite a technical hurdle challenge. And, and some of you have sat through some 
not so great shows, technical this and delays and whatever. And we really appreciate you guys sticking around with us yeah. uh, through all that. It means a lot. And, you know, our audience is kind of split. We have people watching on Facebook Live, right. which is fantastic. And we have people watching at VOBS.TV. Right. You know, so there's people in a few different places. So um, right. it's interesting to me because we it's harder for us to really see Right. Where everybody is. You know, right. I go, oh, there's a few people there, but then everybody else is over here. You right. know, it's interesting. All right. Now, again, if you need help with your home studio, you can go to George, <laughs> Dan, and <laughs> two flavors there's to choose from. from. Exactly. I won't tell you which is which. Yeah, there are two, two, two home studio experts in one. Uh, you can go to georgethetech.com or, or homevoiceoverstudio.com. All right. Happy to have you. And we'll tell you all about it when you talk to us. Uh, let's see here. Um, can we go up talk about this one? Oh, I had a little note in here. I just wanted to, this is something that came up recently. A client got an email. If you bought cl- uh, services from me, you know, to work with me specifically from somebody else, namely Edge Studio, send send me your, if you, if, if you never claim those credits because we offer deals and Right. Just we just send me an email, George at georgethetech.com. Just just send me the receipt that you got from the shopping cart or whatever. I, I will be happy to honor that. Cool. Some people ordered things three, four years ago and have just remembered again <laughs> that they did that. Please just send it to me. I, I just let me know. I'd be happy to help schedule in it and get that taken care of for you guys. All so. righty. We also have show logs if you're watching the show uh, on on YouTube uh, tomorrow or tomorrow morning or a year from now. Show logs are usually with that, and it'll give you a time-by-time breakdown of what was talked about and when. So while you might want to watch the whole show, which is entertaining every second of the way, you can go by and look, go by the uh, show log, and it'll tell you what's going on there. Uh, let's see here. And I, and I think the show logs will also be... Uh, featured here on our website. Mm -hmm. Uh, We do the show live every Monday night, most every Monday night. And if you'd like to be in our audience, it's easy to do if you're in the greater Los Angeles area. Like Dave Cravasia just happened to be in the greater Los Angeles area today, but he was a guest. And then we upgraded him to guest. Guest, yeah. (laughs) So, uh... (laughs) No, it's not a word. Yeah. Uh, If you'd like to be here in the studio, we'd be glad to have you. uh, And just write to us at theguys at vobs.tv. Tell us who you are. If I know you, I might let you in. Uh, no, we'll 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 give you the secret handshake and let you come into the clubhouse. Um, let's see. Show us your booths, guys. Uh, we keep asking you guys take pictures of your homes. To be proud of them. You've taken time to build these things and help us help you. And again, while people don't need to see how the sausage is made, we want to see how the sausage is made, and we want to be in your home studio. Yeah, it can be anonymous if you don't want us. If you don't want to admit that's your studio, right? Tell us you somebody to, else's. Did whatever, just send it in. We'd love to have it. it. It, even if it's just blankets, exactly. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. I'm just we want to see it. It's fun to have those studios behind us. All righty. Well, we need to thank our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials. Mm-hmm. Should I read along? You could. Okay. Voiceover <laughs> Extra. Source Elements. Vo to go go. Voiceactorwebsites dot com. And J Michael Collins. Demos. All righty. Well, we need to also thank Marcy for letting us be out here in the, the garage, former in-law apartment, now voiceover body shop. With air conditioning. With air conditioning, which will get more and more important as the, <laughs> the year goes on. Uh, Catherine Curridan, we've thanked her also for doing being a great producer and getting us a great, uh, great guest. Jack Daniel, who ran out. Thanks, Jack, uh, for doing the chat room. And, of course, our floor producer, technical director, and... All about fine gal, Sue Merlino, for dealing with all of the nonsense that goes on here and making it all happen, Indeed. and it gets better and better every week. Can't beat that. Uh, also, uh, Jack DeGolia for the show notes, and Lee Penny simply for being Lee Penny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll say that also Jack Daniel does beyond the chat room. Oh, I mean, yeah, no, for, he's helping us say, with... He's helped us build up the YouTube channel. Right. She, he's really found a lot of little ways to make the show better. So we really appreciate that, man. Thank you, brother. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. You want more? Sorry, we got to go have dinner somewhere. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for us. It's a tough business. We're here to help you. 
every week here on VoiceOver Body Shop. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Have a great week, everybody. Bye now. Toodaloo.